So this is the topic of gene technology. We're gonna look at how recombinant DNA can be inserted into other cells and how the use of various vectors such as viruses uh, and gene guns can be used. We will look at how antibiotic resistance marker genes and replica plating can be used to identify recombinant cells. So what are vectors? Well, vectors transfer the required gene into the host. A property of a good vector includes that it targets the correct cells, it ensures the gene is inserted so it can be expressed by the host, and it does not have any significant side effects. Plasmids are the most common type of vector to engineer bacteria or plants. You should probably already be familiar with plasmids from studying prokaryotic cells. They are these small rings of double-stranded DNA that are found separately from the main DNA and they replicate independently of that main DNA. Because they're so small and easy to handle in a test tube, the foreign genes can quite easily be incorporated into these plasmids. The plasmid is cut with restriction endonucleases. The same restriction endonucleases are used to isolate the gene so that those sticky ends are complementary and then DNA ligase enzymes are used to link those together uh, and now we've formed recombinant DNA. Plasmids are used naturally for exchange of genes between bacterial cells so bacterial cells will readily take up the plasmid because they're used to doing that process. Transformation means inserting new DNA, usually as a vector, into the host cell which is then genetically modified or transformed. This is done with bacteria and plasmids by heat shock. So you take the bacteria, you put them in solution with your recombinant uh, plasmids, and then you cool them to zero, raise them up to 40 degrees C for 90 seconds, and it causes the bacteria to take up these free engineered plasmids. What about plants though? Well actually, we can use bacteria which naturally infect plants, and we can engineer those bacteria. Let me explain what I mean. Uh, there is a bacterial pathogen called Agarobacterium tumefaciens, which causes crown gall disease in dicotyledonous plants. What it does is it uses its pili to infect root cells with something called the TI plasmid, which carries genes which then cause the target plant to grow a tumour. Now what we can do is we can engineer that plasmid first. We can put in the genes that we want, then transform the Agarobacterium tumefaciens so that it takes up the new plasmid that we want, and then let that Agrobacterium tumefaciens infect the plant, inject its plasmid, but it has the genes on it that we want. So the bacteria is doing the work here to transform the plants for us. You can also transform plants uh, simply using microprojectiles. The, the foreign genes that need to be transferred are coated onto the surface of minute gold or tungsten particles, and then bombarded onto the target tissue or cells using something called a gene gun. And this method is known as biolistics. Transforming animals is a little bit diff more difficult, it's a bit more complex. Uh, there are three methods that are kind of used um, with varied success. Viruses, uh, these are engineered. You engineer the virus and then you inject the virus into, into the animal cells uh, in vivo. Liposomes, these are lipid vesicles which can be used to fuse with membranes and then put the DNA into a cell in vivo again. And microinjection, which is when you inject DNA with a microinjection needle, especially engineered needle, and injects the DNA directly into the nucleus of a cell. Now all these methods of transformation have a very low success rate. It's therefore vital to have a way of checking that it's worked, a test to check that which cells have been transformed and which ones have failed. What we do is when we insert the transgene, we also insert a marker gene as well. It could be bacterial resistance uh, gene, okay? And what we uh, can then do is something called replica plating. We can grow them on an agar plate with specific antibiotics which will kill the ones that haven't been transformed. The ones that have been transformed have got that resistance gene, so they survive and we know which ones they are. Or maybe a safer way is to use green fluorescent protein as the marker. And then all we have to do is shine a UV light on it and we'll see which ones have been transformed. An example of a genetic engineering which has been very successful is the modification of bacteria to produce human insulin. 
uh, and then this can be used to treat people with type 1 diabetes. It's done in just the same way that we've described in these videos by isolating the gene using restriction enzymes and then uh, taking plasmids from bacteria, cutting them both open with the same restriction enzymes, uh, making recombinant DNA using ligase to stick the sticky ends together, transforming them and then extracting them and mass producing them in industrial fermenter and then taking the human insulin protein from them to treat people, which is a much more effective way than using the pig insulin that we used to do.